Hi, my name is Justin Shelfon. I'm the engineering lead at Patch My PC. In this video, I'm going to show you some exciting new features that we release for our publishing service that allows you to define a custom pre and post update script in case you need to do any type of customization for different updates within our catalog. So we'll go ahead and jump right in and I'll show you how it works. The first thing that we're going to do is go over to our product rules. So this option is going to be available per product by right clicking the product and looking in the context menu and choosing the add custom pre and post update installation scripts. So in my case, I'm going to enable a post update script for Firefox. So if I go ahead and paste in my path and we browse out there. So what we're going to be defining within this script is just a VB script that we're going to be using that deletes all the public desktop shortcuts for all the applications that we support within our catalog. So I'll be sure to include this script in case you wanted to use this within your environment. So we'll go ahead and select that. And that's going to be our post script for Firefox. So since Firefox will create a desktop shortcut by default and there's no command line to control that, this would be a good one if you wanted to delete that by having a post update script that's going to delete all those shortcuts. The next option here, we'll go ahead and enable a post update script for Java. So uh, we'll go ahead and en enable the auto kill process. And then we'll go ahead and also enable a custom uh, script. So in our case, we're going to browse out and I have a script here for Java. So what this is just a simple batch file. Uh, and what we're going to be doing within that batch is just disabling the self updater. So let's say there was a scenario where you forgot to disable the Java self updates in your initial application deployment. Well, we could easily handle that in the Java update. Now this one, we do actually enable this by default in the update itself. Um, but just to show you a concept of how this could work, we could also run this via a post update script and show you how this could work in that scenario as well. So we'll go ahead and choose that batch and choose OK. Now, uh, since this is a UNC path and our publishing service runs under system context, you do need to make sure that the computer account of the server has read access to the UNC path if you did use a uh, remote UNC path where your scripts are being hosted. So that looks good. We'll go ahead and apply those settings and we will start publishing our update. So I'll go ahead and start the run now and we'll pause it while those updates publish. All right, looks like the updates just published. So in the left side, we can see our patchmypc.log and we can see that we finished publishing. Now, one thing that you can note is that we also triggered a software update point sync cycle. So on the right side, we can look at our wsync manager log and it initiated the sync. So now our updates automatically synchronize right away to SCCM because under our scheduling, we had the option here to automatically sync the config manager software update point. Now, in our lab, we are using an automatic deployment rule. So these updates have automatically been deployed on our client. So we'll give this a minute or two for policy to kick in, and then we'll show you what the install looks like on the client side. All right, so over on our client side, we can see that we have an outdated version of Java 8. We also have an outdated version of Firefox 64-bit. Now, over in the control panel applet for Java, we can also see that my initial application deployment didn't disable the Java update feature. So we can see that the update tab is enabled and it's set to automatically update. So if we go ahead and jump over to Software Center, since I'm making this visible, we'll go ahead and uh, initiate the installation of these updates. Now, the way the uh, script feature will work, um, if you enable the scripts, there's gonna be a new log file in the C Windows temp folder and it's going to be called patch my PC script runner. Now, if you noticed the Firefox uh, shortcut and the Chrome shortcut automatically got deleted here. So if we look at our script runner log file and you also notice that the Java applet automatically just closed, that's because we had the kill processes enabled. Um, but for the uh, script feature, we can see that we had Firefox. So we went ahead and installed Firefox. The exit code was zero, and then we ran the delete shortcuts VBS script that we defined with an exit code of zero. Uh, we can then see that we moved on to our Java command, and now we're currently running um, the Java update right now. So we'll wait for that to complete, and then we should see the post update batch file runs after that. 
All right, so now we can see that our Java update was successful, and then we ran the batch uh, script that disabled updates right after that. So if we come back here, it looks like our updates were successful. We can refresh control panel and see that we updated. Uh, if we jump back over to our Java applet, let me just open that. We can now see that the update tab is no longer visible. Uh, if we look in our registry and we do a refresh here, we can see that within our um, Java update, we've automatically disabled all the different attributes for the self updater using the script. So that looks good. Um, and we can also verify that the shortcuts were deleted for Firefox. And we also had a shortcut for Chrome that was deleted since our script deleted them all. Now jumping back over to our service, this is really just the beginning of customization that we want to add. Um, so the custom scripts were kind of the initial thing that we wanted to add, but we are going to look at adding additional context menu items for other common things. So for example, instead of having a custom uh, script for some actions like deleting the public shortcut or disabling the self updates, we do want to tie in this feature so we can just give you a single click option for deleting the desktop shortcut for an app or disabling the self update. And of course, if you need to do anything custom, that's when you could still use the pre and post update script. For those other features, we're hoping to get them out within the next uh, month or so. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. I hope this feature is gonna provide you value and thank you for watching.